Hello and welcome to Across the Park Podcast Extra. Thanks for watching on YouTube. And if you're not watching on YouTube and you're listening, we have a very, very special surprise for you today. Myself, Ian Mills and Gary Judge for an Everton FC special. We're going back, we're going to ask this man about his, his, his very short Everton career, but I'm sure there's lots of great stories. Judgey, I'm sure you'll agree. There's not a lot of players you sign at age 37 who lasted two years and they still get in our best 11 now when we when we sit with a pint and talk about them. It is, of course, football royalty, Mr. Richard Goff. Richard, thanks for joining us and Across the Park. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you, Ian. Doing well. Nice to see you as well, Gary. Thanks a lot, mate. No, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to have you on. Absolutely. I think that what we're going to do, Richard, if you don't mind, we're going to talk about your Everton career. But we're going to split it into two sections, your first season and your second season. But... Judge, you've got lots of questions predating Richard's Everton career that you want to get to first, I think. I have, yeah. And and like like we always do, Richard, we, we, we obviously try and do as much research as, as we possibly can um, before yes. we get our guests on. I, know, I knew a hell of a lot about you as a player for Everton. And like Mills, he says, and, you know, he, mm -hmm. he, he intro, in the introduction, you're in my best Everton 11 as, as a fan in terms of players I've, I've seen in the flesh. But I just want to speak, a, you know, a little bit about you, you know, your career pre-Everton, which which was obviously significant, you know, hugely successful. But a few things that, that I, I honestly didn't know until I looked into it, obviously that you were born in born in Sweden. You, you found mm -hmm. your, some of your earlier football experience was in South Africa where you grew up as well. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about Richard Goff, the boy, and, and how, how you got into football. Obviously, your father, I'm sure, was an influence, but talk to us about your, your early years. Yeah. Well, my father was born in Glasgow. Um, mother and mother in Sweden. My father went down to the British Army when when he was about sixteen, and he was a paratrooper for about in the Red Berets for about six or seven years. He captained the British Army team as a as a young man. Um, Charlton Athletic then bought him out the bought him out the army in about sixty one sixty two. Or no, maybe maybe a week. Oh, sorry, later than that. Maybe sixty three, four, and then he played for Charlton. He had about ten games for Charlton. Uh, there was a lad there at Charlton called Eddie Fermani, who uh, was a South African uh, player who had played in Italy for Juventus. I think Fermani had, and he said my dad should go and try. Which a lot of uh, British players went out to South Africa at that time. So. Um, my dad and he had met my mother um, in Aldershot at the, at, you know, where, where he was as a paratrooper. And they hooked up and uh, got married, had me. Um, and I was born in Stockholm because my dad was on um, with the three in Bahrain, looking after the Bahrainian uh, prince, uh, prince at the time. Um, wow. So that's. My dad actually said to my mom, you can go to Scotland and have the boy born. That's why I was born in um, uh, Stockholm, you know, with my, with my mom's parents, you know. But then my dad went out. So I was three, two, three years old when my dad went out to South Africa. And he played for a team out there called Highlands Park, which is a very good team. And um, so, yeah, my, my childhood was out there. And it was all sport, whether it was cricket, whether it was rugby. Um, but my dad had been a football player and a, and a pretty decent one, I think. And um, I just got into that. And at 15 years old, 16 years old, I I came back to Britain and tried to tried to um, become a professional football player, which was always my passion from a young age. Um, Fortunately enough, I, play, I played with Charlton. Uh, I got picked up as an apprentice at Charlton. But I can't remember, just turned 15, 16. It was a long way, it was a long way from, from home, and I got really homesick a lot of the time. And I, I stayed at home for about months. And then, then I, funny enough, I came back on a, in February 1980, I came back on a trial because my dad had said, look, give it, give it another shot. You definitely in his opinion, was good enough to play, good, good enough to give it a crack. And um, so I came back and I, I came for a trial at Rangers at the February 1980. They never picked me up. I went to Dundee United and Dundee United picked me up uh, as, as a kid. 
and it was, it was probably the best thing that happened because as a young as a young player at a big club at Rangers, it might not have might not have happened for me or might not have played. But at Dundee United at that time, they had a manager called Jim McLean, uh, and Walter Smith was the assistant manager. Funny enough, um, and um, I played my first game next to Walter at uh, at Dundee uh, at Broth, a little a little a little town called Abroth. And um, straight away after the game, they just offered me a two-year contract, and I signed it. And little did I know then that um, that Dundee United team was was a really good team. You know, they had really good players. We 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 won the league the following year. Um, we went to we went on to play in the the European Cup semi final uh, during that period. Uh, two European quarterfinals in the UEFA Cup during that period as well, and just had it was it was at the time when you couldn't really you didn't need to sell your players as much, yeah, like, type of thing. So you could hold on to your team, and that team was a just a, a fantastic team during that period. You know, from 1981 to 80, 87, 88. You know, so that was the the beginning. The beginnings of, of you know well well uh, you've you've it's a perfect segue there you talked about not being or at times during that period being able to keep your team together you, mm-hmm. when you eventually found yourself at rangers after after your spell at tottenham as a new career here, but I, I want to try and keep the threads at everton if that's okay yes, yes you, of you course were, you and your you you and your rangers team were the beneficiary of a lot of our players that ended up leaving uh 1985 you know in 86 if you like successful team and i, I yes. spoke up there before we recorded um talk to us about about that rangers team and, and again I, I guess about some of the everton players that you guys benefited from who, who went up north after we were we were back absolutely, yeah, absolutely i mean we you know, um i always say we we, we got gary stevens uh, uh right back in 1988 we got Trevor the following year from Everton, and uh, my favourite from from Everton, we got Andy Gray. Old Andy <laughs> came up for a couple of years. Right. What, mean, a what a legend! What a legend! I mean, he's a very, very, he's a very good friend of mine, very close friend of mine. Um, and I'll be seeing him in a in a maybe in a couple of weeks in uh, in Las Vegas. Um, wow. So he's uh yeah, you know. I can remember getting into the Scottish team, and Andy was in the Scottish team when he was, you know, when he was playing for for Everton at that time, you know, and he was knocking the goals. And funny because I watched, um, I spoke to him the other day. I watched the, I hadn't seen um, the the autobiography on, or the the TV show on Howard Ken. The oh, well, how, how, how how way. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I just and it was all about obviously I knew 85, 86, but there was clips in that that I just I saw Andy scoring all these goals and you know Trevor at his peak and Gary Stevens at his yeah. peak. And then like you say, because of the because of the ban on European football, got the last uh Butcher, Gary Stevens, Trevor Steven, you know, I mean they were they were too at their prime, not not when they were, no, not yeah. when they were. We got them both in like 20, 26, You know, it was, it was quite incredible. Um, the players that we had at Rangers at the time, and we should have done better in Europe. But you know, this was a bit different because it was just a knockout stage. So you were up against Bayern Munich, or you were up against you know Juventus, or you know one of the big ones straight away, kind of thing. You know, so um, we dominated. Yeah. We, we, we dominated Scottish football for a long time. Not like the easy, not like the easy European cups that Liverpool are winning now. The, uh, <laughs> you can get beat three or four times and then still win. <laughs> but I look back at that Howard thing, that documentary, and I see how easily, and, you know, beat was it Rapid Vienna? Yeah, in the final, yeah, yeah. No, like, the final, it's just like a, just a, a stroll in the park, you know. It's, it's yeah. fantastic. So, yeah, that, no, but that was a that was a powerful team, and putting and putting um, putting Bayern Munich out in the in the semi in the semi final. Right, I, yeah. I remember the good semi, but I hadn't seen the I hadn't seen the you know the, the proper highlights type thing. And they battered them. 
Yeah, back to the Pierre Reed and yeah, just just the left back Van den Hal. I can remember all those games we played against him. Funny enough, we played against Dundee United. Dundee United in 1984. If you go back and have a look, Gary and Ian, we we had a friendly against them in February of 1984, I think it was. Okay. And um, I can remember thinking, "Whoa, what a strong side this is." We draw, we drew one one at Tannadice, but it was a a really real physical game. Um, I can remember Radcliffe at the back and thinking, even then, I was only 21, 22 at the time. What a great player. You know, he was, you know, was a, you know, just, yeah, you could see a right right center. Peter Reed and yeah, great center right through the, right through the, right through yeah. the, you know, so but it wasn't a surprise to me that they went on and, and, um, you know, the one that they were from, from 84, 82 up about 89, always a, a threat. Even when I went to Spurs at that time, my, my season at Spurs in 86 and, 87, I played, obviously I played against Everton then as well, you know, I played against yeah. Sharpie, played against yeah. Sharpie, oh. we travelled up after the game, we travelled up after the game to to, um, to Scotland to play in the Scotland team, you know, I think Andy Roxburgh, you know, so, no, a right good team around that that period. Just going to ask you a few a few questions, Rich, Richard, before we move into the your time at Everton. Um, sure. You just spoke about, um, well, I, I say you just spoke about, we, we've spoke to a number of your um, teammates in the past over yeah. the last few years. A lot of them, particularly the likes of David Weir, Michael Ball, point to you as, as being a huge influence on them for, for periods of their careers. Was there anyone when you when you grew up as, as a player that you played alongside, that you, that you looked up to, that you learned a lot from in particular? Yeah, and I, you know, like I, a lot of people have said to me over the years, did you did you go to young players and, uh, and, and say anything to younger players as you were going? I, I said, not not really. I I would try and impress the young players that pick a senior player that you you think's a good example and try and follow him because that you know if he if he's a really good player, at, you know, at an older age, he's obviously done the right the right stuff, you know. And I looked when I saw. So on the Scottish team when I was 20 and the two best players in the Scottish team were were Graham Souness and Jimmy Douglas at that time I know the Liverpool players you know and the, you know they, they caused Everton a lot of grief over the years but, yeah. uh, they, were two, they were terrific the two of them they were different you know and it was funny it was really funny because when I come into the team um, I was 20 and and Graham Souness came over to me and, and you know, put his arm around me and he <coughs> made me form as a, as a young player coming into the Scottish team. Then he was more, um, what did I call it? Was it? <coughs> not as, not as, uh, not as, not as cuddly as Graham was, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like Sunus was a great captain, you know. So I learned a lot. I looked and I saw myself. And he was—he had just gone to Sampdoria, you know, at that time. And I looked at him. I was like, he was what, what he was eating. There were so there were two different characters, the two boys. I mean, Sunus was—he was eating his liver and his fats and everything. And Kenny was eating a, a, a bacon roll with a fried egg in it, and that, you know, like. <laughs> I'm following, I'm following Graham here, whatever he's doing, you know. So, like, anyway, so that was it, you know. So, I always thought follow, you know, uh, pick a player and try and follow him. So, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad, uh, you know, I never said to anyone, try and follow me or try and do this, but, you know, I, I, I was always um, a big uh, going to the gym, going into the gym, even when I was young. A young boy, I got there in South Africa. My friend and my father's actually just got into the gym and making yourself stronger all the time. And in that case, had a multi gym, it didn't even have like the gyms that we do today. And I was always working at, at other things, you know. I, I used to go down to the boxing, I used to swim a lot, you know. I just used to try and keep myself in as good a condition as possible because I knew it would, would benefit me later on in my career, which is 
which it ultimately it did. did. It ab- absolutely did, and, and we were the beneficiaries of that, which I think George yeah. is going to come on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so you know, like, and David Weir said to me as well. I think David was, was a good example of that, having because yeah. he was bright boy, David, bright boy, you know. And when I came to Everton, you know, I'd seen us and um, I knew he was a good player, but I didn't know he was good as, you know, when playing alongside him. You know, I thought myself, you know, uh, he's not the quickest. He might struggle a wee bit pace-wise. So we have to watch what we do, keep in lines and that, you know. And uh, But he was great. Everything he did was top, just... Yeah. Top player. Top, top, top player. No mistakes. That, you know, and very, very consistent as a defender, you know. And Bowley... Bowley was great. I mean, what a what a left foot ball. And I love Bowley. But I used to say to him, Bowley, he used to just, you know, go up to the half of and I said, Bowley, carry on, man. Just, just keep going, you know. You've got so much more. You've got so much more. You know, I said to him, you've got you're better than just just playing up to the halfway line. Just just carry on going, you know. And I think he took a bit of that on board and he went on his career as well. And his missus is Mrs. Goff. I think her maiden name's Goff. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it is because I always wind them up about that. I said, "Very much about that." Always so my dad, they're like, so, uh, yeah. But they were two two, uh, two great players, you know. Yeah, and and we'll, we'll move into it. Move into your time yes. if you don't mind. It, sure. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ref- and not the not that I'm doubting your memory, Richard, but I'm just gonna refresh. Yes. Set this scene a little bit. So, as you arrived at, at Everton, um, there were a few notable um, players who left. So, Olivier de Court left just as you who came in. Bakayoko, Matarazzi, Craig Shaw. So, a couple of a couple of centre backs yeah. who you know prior to you coming in has established themselves. Alongside yourself, we brought in Scott Gemmel, obviously David Weir, we just mentioned. Kevin Campbell signed a permanent deal, which was a massive at the time, mm-hmm. a massive deal for mm-hmm. the club. Abel Xavier, another centre back, came in. So. You know, we, to a certain extent, he'd look to replace in the positions that that had left. Um, some of the players at the time that were particularly influential, and we're obviously going to go on and speak about these in, in particular games yeah. that we asked about. Nick Barnby was a, was a massively influential player in the final third for us around that time. Kevin Campbell, obviously, as as we've just said, had just signed a permanent deal. Franny Jeffers was breaking through. We had John Hutchison, John Collins, two fantastic talented, yeah. talented midfielders. Yeah. Um, and and what what strikes me about the squad, the makeup of the squad when you came in, Richard, is we had such a good balance. Like you know, there, there was so, there was young players that we've mentioned there, Borley. Yeah. Um, we had you know homegrown players like Jeffers, as I said, David Unsworth was still on on the on the right side of of, of you know twenty five. Richard Dunn, Casamatri, yep. yes. Grant was was coming to the end of his Everton career, but again, a, a young lad who who knew what it was about to be to be an Evertonian. And then we had the likes of yourself. Dave Watson was still around at that time. Terry yeah. Feeling. Later yeah. on in that season, we picked up um, Mark Hughes. So, for me, it looked like, you know, one of the things that Walter had tried to do during that season, and, and certainly during his tenure, was to was to try and strike that balance between experience and youth. Look, I'll take you back a wee bit there. I mean, I, I, I was playing over here in America, and I was really going to retire. And then, I guess if I had a one of the, you know, like in the January. So I actually went and played for Nottingham Forest. I thought Atkinson, just I said, because they, they were struggling. They were a very poor team. Yeah. I said, I'll just follow them. Because I was going back to take over the American under-21s. I played for Nottingham Forest about six games or seven games, you know. And um, Harry Redknapp called me up at West Ham. He says, Goffey, I've got a young player here. He said, I've been watching you playing in the games. He says, you definitely... He says, you're cruising the games. He says, I've got a young player here who would learn a lot of, you know, from you, you know. There's a young kid called Rio Ferdinand. He said, if he did a season with you, uh-huh. you'd be okay, you know. So I went, oh, right. So I says, okay. I said, that, that's fine, Harry. I says, oh, 100%. So I phoned Walter up just to say, just to say, you know what, the money, you know, what money should I get or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not, not thinking of staying, are you? I said, I says, yeah. I said, he's giving you, he's going to offer me a few bob, you know. Yeah. So Walter says, well, you're not going there. Come here, you know. Mm. And I went, well, you've got Dave Watson. You've got same same age as me, you know, you're yeah. in my position. 
And he says, oh, Waggy's got a sore leg off yet. I'm going to get him onto the coaching side of things, you know, more, you know? so That's right, he says, yeah. I had to phone Harry Redknapp back and says, I said, Harry, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to sign for another Premier team, you know? I said, I, I can't believe it. I said, I've never done this in my life, blah, blah, blah. And he went, it's Walter Smith, isn't it? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I." He says, "I knew it." He says, "I knew it." He's watching you as well. He's not letting you go anywhere to another team, you know. So, so anyway, so to Everton. So now, thirty-seven years old. I see the the local echo. Why are we signing an old guy like Richard mm. Goff? Blah blah, yeah. blah blah. You know all the people. I mean, they've just sold Matarazzi for three million. We're getting him on a free transfer, you know. So I'm like, right, okay. So. First, you know, the, the the thing in football, no matter what you've done, and I had won, you know, like, I had 20 winning medals and stuff like that. But you have to, when you go to a new team, you have to reprove yourself to all the players there in a, in a new, oh, okay, Richard Goff, uh, captain of Scotland, captain of Rangers, blah, blah, blah. But once you come into a new place, a new work environment, wherever you are, you have to, like, Reprove yourself again. So it was pre-season, like that. When I was in America, when I, went, I got myself nice and fit, and which I could pretty much uh, I used to do anyway. And you know, I, I was I was always in the front in the pre-season. You know, you know myself, Feelin actually. <laughs> you said Terry Feelin yeah. was like you run golf. Yeah. I said I might not be able to do well, but I said run. You know, like laughing away, laughing away. So, anyway, so that was a start. And then I got off to a really good start against Man United, you know. Um, I think I played one of my best games I've probably ever played for Everton. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, so I got, you know, it was a good... That was, uh, that was you know, Sun United's team, yeah. by the way, Goffey. That, that was well, they just, their last game had been, they just won the treble. The game That's right, yeah. They, they'd won the Champions League. Yeah. Well, so I, I can always remember saying to, um, to uh, David Watson, because I saw the boards coming up at uh, the side of the, the park and they were taking uh, Dwight uh, Cole. They were taking him off. I said, look at that. Watch the baby. Oh, it's <laughs> away it was me and David. I said, two 37-year-olds have put them asleep to young boys. You know? <laughs> they brought the Solskjaer and um, bearing him on. Bearing oh, him on. God, you know. <laughs> look who's coming on. Go off here. like that. Brilliant, you know. So no, we got, and it was a real, like you say, it was a strong team. It was, uh, you know, you missed that player. You missed that. Uh, I think Don Hutchinson as well, who was an top underrated player. player. Yeah, top player. It was good. It was good. It was good in the dressing room. It was. It was good on the. You know, it was good. Lacked uh, a wee bit of pace, but I always he was uh, very underrated. You know. Um, so no, great bunch of boys, and then like once. You know, the dressing room is like, I've, I've been involved in dressing rooms for 20 years. So, um, you know, I think once the boys seen me play a wee bit, you know, even in, during the during the thing and seeing, seeing the thing, then you, you prove yourself again. And uh, and that was it. You know, and I, the main thing which uh, I really wanted to do was prove myself to the Everton, to the Everton supporters that I could still play a wee bit. And um, I, I, I sometimes think that, that first season that I had at, at Goodison was, you know, was, uh, because at Rangers it was a different type of defending where mm -hmm. we were attacking so much. Yeah. My defending was more setting people up not to get caught on the break and playing 1v1, stuff like that. Whereas at Everton it was more more proper defending, which I used to yeah. like. So, mm -hmm. you know, all the time. Type thing, you know, and um, uh, a lot of the time, anyway, and heading balls out of the box and tackling, you know, and, you know, so you were much more involved. So I, I, I kind of thought ever um, people were seeing our defensive qualities a lot more than they were at Rangers. The Rangers was, was more um, uh, more organising and defensive. yeah, people, but maybe the fans don't always see. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly, but in uh, Everton, it was full on, you know. It was one beat, and I, that, remember, I can remember Alex Ferguson coming out, you know, after the game, that first game, or something. He went, what, what, Richard Goff, you know, I mean, what's what's you know, 
37, playing like that. You see, you should, shouldn't be like you know, should be playing like that. <laughs> uh, he, he always wanted to sign me from, from way back, you know, you know, like when I went from from Tottenham back to yeah, to uh, he wanted to say he wanted to take, to take me to Manchester. So he had a good, uh, it was always good that he rated me quite, quite highly. So it was, it was good for my confidence, you know. Well, I'm going to talk, talk through some of the, the games. Listen, uh, just on the season in general, and you touched on it just then, which is yes. it, one, of my, one of my most memorable uh, seasons as a fan because not only were the team so talented, like, uh-huh. like you touched on, he has a lot of character as well, a lot of character about yes. them. I mean, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to touch on this current team because the idea of these episodes is to, is to relive better times, and, and this, was, this, was, this was one of those seasons. Um, just looking again at some of the, the earlier games you're part of, I think mm. the one that sticks out early on was 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 your first goal, which come after only four games, and it was against against Southampton in a four one win. It was it was our first victory of the season because after that Man United game, we had a, something of a, a wobbly spell where we, we we drew a couple of games and we lost one. We we yet to get off the mark, but that win against Southampton was a was a very convincing one. You got the first goal that day. Yeah, yeah. I can remember, yeah, I can remember. I can't remember I've been uh, struggling in the first few games. Uh, I can remember the second game was Aston Villa. I think we got beat away from home down there. Uh, yeah, and then, then we lost, the, lost 3-2 at Spurs then. I say struggling, you know. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we yeah, yeah. But we were playing well, actually. Yeah. We, played, we, played, we were playing well. So that was that was a good thing. We, we were creating a lot. It was a, yeah, there was a basis of a, a, a real solid team there. Um, I always think, you know. No, I remember the, you know, the goal against uh, uh, Southampton, you know. So, I, was, I think I was the oldest player to score for Everton at that time. You know, someone said, somebody said to me, you know, in the Premier League anyway, you know. Yeah, and right. I think that, that's still the record. I think it was the um, uh, player to, to score or something, you know, for Everton. Um, I'm not sure it's what we took, it took that then, I, I think it was, yeah. Do you know what? The same season. I think it was Mark Hughes. I think he took yeah. it off you later on in the season. Maybe. Maybe. Could have yeah. been. Could have been. Yeah. It took at, at the, t- the, at the time, though, no, yeah. At the time, you, you're right. But I, but I remember when you when you scored that goal, because we weren't really used to, you know, centre-half scoring. We were a team who were, <laughs> I think, what, Walter tried to build Maybe. that in into... Olivier de Court and John Collins and things. And as soon as you scored the goal, everyone was lumping on your first goal. You lost everyone so much money by only scoring once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because I had a decent scoring rate in my career, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. well obviously, the, the, the next the next fiction I'm going to touch on is a game that, that Evertonians still still go on about. And, and I guess oh. we... We were going on about it even more until uh, twelve months or so ago when we when we managed to get another victory there. But it was the one nil victory at Anfield where mm-hmm. Kevin Campbell scored at the cop. I mean, every yeah. every guest that we have on the plays in that game, and we've had quite a few of them. I talk about myself getting a ticket in the cop and being right at the back amongst all the Reds, and what a you know what a brilliant night it was for for us as Evertonians, and and to a certain extent, and as you, you said before, it shows how, how good that team was as well. I can, I can remember, and then, like, like someone had said to me before the, I got interviewed by the the, the Liverpool Echo or something, that, um, and they'd said, um, uh, Richard, you're going to, and you know, you know, and you're playing against uh, Owen and um, Fowler, you're 21, 22, 23, or something that you know, you know, you're 37. You know, and I, and, I, and I said to them, "How they said, they said, how will you deal with the atmosphere or something?" And I, I said, "You know, I've been lucky enough to have played in, you know, the North London derbies. You know, the, you know, the Glasgow derby. I said, I said, I've had maybe forty-four of those, Glasgow. You know, which which is absolutely mayhem. I said, I think I'll be okay. You know, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> so we go, and, you know, we go into the ground and." You know, and and I, I I was pretty confident, you know, not to get the win, but I mean, just to we, we'll 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 do okay, you know. And uh, we did. We started well. We started well, and um, just the things I remember that from that game that we, we we defended well. Kevin Campbell scoring, and um, and I can remember Gerard coming on as a young man. I still wind him up a bit. Uh, he took Kevin Campbell that, you know, and I said to the referee, I ran right up to 
referee yeah. straight away and I got you know then I just said to him, that's a red in it straight red in it and the referee went absolutely Mr. God he was like that. <laughs> well, Gerald was only about 18 at the time you know, yeah. obviously going to go on and have a great career um, but yeah and it was good and uh, I always tell people I've only played at Anfield three times and I've won three times I've, wow. uh, yeah it's a good record I played with you're available, on, you're available on Sunday, Richard. No, I know exactly, exactly. I played at Spurs for Spurs. Clive Allen scored. We won one 0 and that we we got another. I mean, and one there for about you know years or something as well. And then um, I played with Everton, obviously. And then my third one was you can't really call it a proper game. It was Stevie Nichols' testimonial, and we went down and uh, I came down and played in a in a team against him. And we, and we, we beat them down there as well, but the two games I played two proper proper games and one one both games at Anfield and the, the twice I played then you know so but that was good. That, and that gave us I can remember you know going out you know that night and um, in in Liverpool and bumping into Jamie Redner who was that um, and he said no you deserve to win and stuff like that you know but we had a we had a we had a strong we had a strong team in the midfield as well. John Collins, yeah. uh, you know, Xavier, you know, Don, you know, and up front we, with Jeffers. And did Franny get sent off that night? Did he get sent off? Yes, he like the, the bells, yeah. <laughs> that was, he was trying to punch yeah, him. Was, was, yeah, they're slapping, yeah. Up at each other, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and Kevin as well, you know, so it was very good, uh, good team, good solid team, you know. Well, you say solid, Richard. The, the, the game, next game I'm going to touch on, didn't quite show the solid side of it. It was the 4-4 game with Leeds. Mm-hmm. What a game it was. It was a, I can remember well, that one as well for the, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Not the wrong reasons for me, but they had the boy... Um, they were a good team. They were a good team. Yeah, they were spending a lot of money, a lot of good players and... Uh, must have been February sometime, every time, maybe February. Around it was actually February. the end of October. It was actually the end was of it? October. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was winter. Played, yeah. Was them, away. Was going. played them away. Played them away in February, I think. That this was the home game. Yeah, right, okay. So, yeah, so um, I can remember Radebi coming up to me before the game. It's Radebi mm-hmm. coming up and he, he gave me an African handshake because he knew mm-hmm. I'd been growing up in South Africa and stuff like that. He come up and, you know, said spoke spoke about South Africa a wee bit. Anyway. Yeah. Game. And um Alan Smith. Was it Alan Smith they had up front? Yeah, yeah. I've come I've just gone and headed one away. He's come across me and cut cut my eye. And I'm like, I can't believe that, right? You know, like I said, I'm 37 now, I'm getting, still getting cut eyes, and I've never seen it coming, you know. So I said, I said to him, I said, Come on, because he straight away he went right onto the right wing, you know, on the left wing. He was staying, he wasn't coming in the middle. I said, I'm getting you before, you know. And the baby was, <laughs> oh, leave him alone. Oh, I said, No, no, he's getting it. No, <laughs> he did he went or something, but he went away. He, did, he never came near me for the, the rest, it was quite near the end of the game. Yeah, um, I remember. I think David Weir scored, didn't he? He scored the equaliser. Yeah, yeah. Up at Sand, yeah. I remember David scoring. You know, like so. I mean, uh, you can see what I've got. I've got. I'm sitting in my little basement here, and I've got a few pictures of, um, you know, my Everton times and all, all all my clubs times. You know, so um, I had a, got a good picture of just me giving Davy a hug, and I think it's. <laughs> That game, that game as well. That game, yeah, yeah. It is that I, I was I was actually watching that game back before, and and that's the last pitch you see is you and Davy having a, a good good hug. Yeah, game. but that was a that was a yeah. They were a good side. They were a very good team, you know. A good team. Well, it's it's. I'm going to just push forward a little bit on the season. We went on a, a bit of a um, a bit of a old run after that game. So we we lost. Well, we didn't win for another nine games. Um, I was a Pretty poor period. Um, and then we had a, a decent run over Christmas, which put us into a really good position going into the new year. We also had a bit of an FA Cup run, which is what I'm going to touch on now. Yes. We had a quarter final against Aston Villa, which 
we spoke, Millsy spoke about before, you're not quite getting on the score sheet after that pit. You come very close that day, hitting the post with a cracking ball. Yeah. Yes, I can remember. I can remember the, yeah, the it was quarter final, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can remember. But just, um, you know, the stuff that, you know, that I always just. They were a good team as well during that period as well. Yeah, they? yeah, absolutely, yeah. All good players, good All players. Yeah. That's one of the goals that day. They had, they had some good attacking players. Carbone was a, was up there as well. Carbone, um, yeah. Steve Stone was just coming through. Uh, they had um, Gareth Southgate at the back as well, didn't he? Yeah, Hugo Echiog and Gareth Southgate. Very good. Who was the manager there? Who the manager was um, John Gregory. John Gregory. That's right. That's right. Yeah, had a good side. Yeah. But I can remember the, the even just going back to the league games where we, we we must have been about seventh or eighth during that time. So we, 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 yeah. we were heading for a we were heading for a good uh, a good position. Eh? You were in a you were in a very very good position, and it was and I, and I wanted to ask you about this because you, yes. you look back at, and at the time as a fan you you may we maybe didn't reflect on this, but you look back at it now and you you just see results. There seem to be like quite a few periods of the season where. You get yourself in a really good position and then wouldn't win for like five or six games. Do you, do you ever remember that being something that the players or the or the manager spoke about? Or was it was it ever anything you remember? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't really. I don't think so. You know, I think it's just the the way it turned out. You know, I can yeah. remember. Yeah, you always remember the really good results. You know, the, yeah. I can remember going down later on in that season and going down to West Ham and winning four 0 Four 0 yeah. yeah. I can exactly. remember going down there and, and and doing stuff like that, you know. Um, I, think Hughes, I think I think Mark Hughes may have scored in that game actually. I think Barnby scored a hat trick. Oh, he did. You're right. Sorry, there was there was, was a game it? before that. Mark Hughes got one. Barnby yeah. did get one. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, just on that one as well, and and it was again a put- Mark, Mark the first season or the second season. I thought he came in the match season. He came, he came in the he came in the March of that season. So oh, it was like. So we right. bought so Smith Walter bought in um, Stephen Hughes and Mark Hughes in, over the, right. a few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe yeah. trying to give the squad a little bit extra to get get his yeah. you know, get his over the line. Yeah. Um, yes. One player I just wanted to ask you about. He's another player who came in around that time. It was in February, mm. but he got a goal in that Villa game. He was something of a um, something something of an enigma that the Everton fans seemed to take to him, but he never really got a, a solid run in the team. Joe Match more. Yeah, I remember Joe. Remember Joe. I played against him uh, when I was playing. So, um, yeah, he was a, he was a good replay. I liked him. I always liked him. I mean, he'd give a hundred percent. I mean, he wasn't the most. I wouldn't say the most talented, but he would give you a hundred percent. And I think, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I think the Everton uh, supporters appreciated that as well. You know. Definitely. Yeah, still so, do, uh, still do. So sometimes that that's even now, Richard, at, at the ground. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's what that's all we ask for. You know, if the, t- the team get beat, but they work the hardest, and and it's just a quality issue. That that's all we've ever wanted. And you're right, what you say there, Joe Max was the epitome of that. Yeah, I can remember Walter Smith saying things like, you know, like, you know, at Everton and at, at Rangers, um, you know, when we were going through maybe a bad spell, the team wasn't playing too well, and he would come in and say. Look, I don't ask you too many things, but I ask you, the one thing I ask you to do is run around. Yeah. Run around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind if you misplace passes or miss, but, but run around and tackle people. Just, you know, so you know, so that was a that was a that was a major thing, you know. Yeah, well, that's like like I said at this when we we started talking about this season, yeah. it was it was a very good season. And although I think as Anyone looking back at it will see that we finished thirteenth, but we were actually only eight points off sixth. It was a ve- it was very tight up there, and our home record, if we did not lost the last game against Middlesbrough, which I think was a bit of a dead rubber at the time, if we wouldn't have lost that game, we would have had the second best home record in the league, which is which yeah. is some going. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I was playing a lot of games, and I, I hadn't touched with. I hadn't been injured that first thing, and I and I. I hurt my calf in um, training before the Leicester game, and I had to come off away at Leicester, and I hurt my calf, yeah. and I was roughly out for the the last four or five games of the season. I missed, I think, you know, and um, which was a which was a blow to me, you know. 
Um, yeah, and 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 it was the, it was the, that. I don't, think, I don't think that helped the team. I don't think that helped the team either because we just started. We're in a safe position, and we started, um, you know, kind of kind of cruising, you know, cruising along. Yeah, that, that that's exactly what it happened when 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 you look at it. We did have you know, a, a four. I, I can remember. I can remember, you know, and and how because I'd played with the there was an expectation sometimes. You know, at, at Everton, if we, if you know, especially that season, you know, if we can stay in the Premier Division, you know, it was it was a good thing. And I, I was obviously used to work things at the, at the, the top end of the table. And I can remember yeah. going to to Manchester United that that uh, my first season, and we're going into Manchester into the stadium, and Don Hutchinson, who we'll talk about obviously later as well. But Don Hutch said, "Oh, he said if we get if we get if we get a two 0 here, that will be some result. That will be a good result, you know." And they were flying, and I went, "That'll be a great result." And he went, "No, no. I mean, if we get beat two 0 oh. right, right." And I went, "I went crazy, you know, on the bus, <laughs> right?" So I went, "Ah, fucking that's you know that's a my attitude, blah blah blah, you know, in front of them, but you know, the, you know." And that was it, anyway. We're playing that old travel. We go one 0 up. Johnny goes down the wing. He crosses. I think big Kevin Kevin scored. We go one 0 up. That one 0 up, yeah. Franny yeah. Jeffers, it was. Franny it was Franny. It was Franny. It was yeah. Franny scores. And I'm coming back and and I says to I said I told you Hutch we can get a result here right anyway <laughs> end of the game we got beat five one right. <laughs> And he said to me after the game, he said, I told you, you know, it was again. Just, you know, much, you know, take the two now, love. After you know, after they were fucking Beckham and Giggs and balls coming in a box. I mean, oh, you know, they would just lay on fire during that, you know, that it was such such a good team they had, you know. So um, it made me realise what, what other teams, when they came to Rangers, you know, had. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's it, it's definitely that that factor. Like I said, if we get beat two, yeah. it was You know, it was yeah. You were kind of in there. if you could keep the score down, it would be a good result. You know, type thing. You know, you you, you were scared of getting a hiding like like we ended up getting. You know, yeah. um, so it just gave me a wee bit of the reality where I was, and that's why I'm thinking with with Everton at that time. We were, you know, at the beginning of the season, if we had finished mid table. <coughs> That would have been a good. Um, Absolutely, would have been a good. Yeah, because because uh, that's in the club at the time. But when financial Walter, trouble, been, like because of all the financial, I mean, I said to Walter at the time, I said, "You sell Marco Materazzi for three million pound and get me on in a on a free transfer, you know, and you're at thirty seven and he's twenty one going out the door to um, into Milan or wherever he went, you know." So um, yeah, so the, the, the the expectation level was different there at the time, you know. Yeah, and uh, finish, and that's why I, I can remember should have finished in, I would have think, eight on eighth or seventh. We could have finished in, you know, yeah. and we yeah, yeah. popped off the, the last game. So. Even even the last game, which, which looked on on paper like it was a bit of a, a bit of a tough <coughs> winning that last game against Middlesbrough would have would have left just tenth that season, and you know again that would have left you four points off or five points off eighth, which. Or off sixth, sorry. So yeah. it was a very tight up there. There wasn't a lot between, I think, from fifth yes. all the way down to fourteen. Exactly, exactly. You know, exactly. But you know. Just, be just before we move on to to Mills, he said, other story with Hutch. Other story with Hutch. He's a yeah. good friend of mine, uh, Don Hutchinson. You're like, yeah. on, on my Instagram, and that we're playing. I think it was Coventry. I don't know who it was. I think it was coming. Is this is this where is this where you had a bit of a ding dong on the pitch? Yes, we've, yeah, had yeah. On, we've, we've had Don on the show, and he so it'd be good to hear your version now. <laughs> right. Well, Hutchman's probably exaggerated everything. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I think it was something like he was wanting the defenders to come further forward or something. We got a ding dong anyway, you know. Like, and I says, "Well, you Hutch, you're not getting close to anyone anyway." I mean, so. We have to go back a ways if you're not close or something. And then he, and then it, and I think he threw a, I don't think he was even a punch. He didn't throw a punch at me, but anyway, sure, yeah. I shoved and I've, I've fallen over. 
And anyway, so I said, well, it was right near quite near half time. So I was like, okay, I'll just knock him out at half time when in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the dressing room and Archie knocks out because Archie seen me. He knew exactly what I was like. I was a bit crazy sometimes, you know. So, so Archie's grabbed me and said, leave him alone, Goffy. You know, I said, no, oh, no, I'm just, no, nah, I'm just going to go, you know, go and say, something to him, you know, and he went, nah, leave it, leave it. But as I walked into the dressing room, Hutch was there and he says, Goffey, I apologise, you know, but straight away, you know, so it was, it was nothing. But I, I liked that about him, you know, he had the, yeah. he wanted to win, you know, he, he wanted to win as well. He's, um, like I said, he was a really underrated player. He was good in he the air, yeah, he was a yeah. shot, you know, he was, he was, a, he was a, I would say, he was a clever football player, you know. And, um, Very clever, and I, you know, you know, I, um, I appreciated that type of character. That, that you know, like uh, um, I think he, I think he was club captain for a while I as well. Say that, I to say that to an older, you know, stuff. You know, it was fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember he had the armbands for a while. Don Hutchinson as well. He was, he was, he was a top player, but I mean, it's a, it's right, a good move sorry. into the into the captain. He was a captain, eh? Captain, he was. Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then we, we go into the <clears throat> excuse me the two thousand two thousand one season, and we sort of lose lots of players. We, we lose Don, we lose John Collins, we lose Mark Hughes, Danny Casamartri. The one that really hurt us at the time, and we, we've asked guests on this podcast their opinion. We've had Michael Ball, Davy Weir, Alan Myers. Uh, we've had lots of players on. We've asked them their thoughts at the time. So it, I think you were the club captain again, going into two thousand two thousand one. So how yes. did you how did you view the move? Nick Barnby going directly to Liverpool, and all the media at the time was sort of saying he was pushing for it because the half was his fans. What was it like in the dressing room if he was the club captain? Yeah, you know, you 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 do lose players, and I don't think it was. Um, he was just one of the. There was quite a, a few of the players had left at that time, you know. Yeah. Um, John Collins for me was a big loss. Yeah, he was. A, he, was a, he was a real good player, you know. Um, so you're taking two of the best players in the team out of the team, you know. Um, I know we replaced, you know, I didn't, in my view, we didn't replace with the quality of those two boys were, you know. So yeah. for me, yeah. the, the, the second season was a huge disappointment for me at Everton because I got injured in my, my third. Yeah, that's right. Um, the first real serious injury of my career. Um, and I opened the ligament up and I, you know, and I, I just, I'd signed the contract the year before, I mean, sorry, in the March or the, the April, you know, the year, because I've had such a good season. And then to, I'd say, Walter, right after the, right after the game, after the operation that I had, um, that, you know, just to render the contract, you know, and because I didn't think I would play again. And Walter right. actually said to me, Richard, you'll, he said, I'll need you. He says, because this is going to be a tough season for us. Yeah, yeah. And I, I came back in about the February. I think it was yeah, again. You I came back against, yeah, you came back again. Yeah. I came back against Tranmere. Yeah. And I was never, I was never really as... Um, <laughs> and I, I came back and I was just thrown into <laughs> games. Manchester United and Leeds and it was all the games back to back. And I was... Big uh, games, was, yeah. yeah. I wasn't as... Uh, I wasn't... I didn't feel as confident as I was in the first season, you know, with my with my with my with my knee. Yeah, I you mean, know, just 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 uh, just to rewind a little bit, there you, you said that you signed the the contract extension in, in March of, of two thousand. I, I vividly remember when you first came to Everton. There was comments yeah. from I think it was even yourself might have said this is going to be my last season as as a professional footballer. Were you sort of talked into a second year? Was it a hard decision, an easy decision? No, when I played as well as a, as I had that season, you know, um, you know, it was quite it was strange because I had um, I never had an agent. I was one of the few football players who never had an agent. Even even back then, I just I used to go into the chairman at Rangers and say, "Look, I'm I'm running the room down there. You know, this is what I want." And he would say, "Fine." So, and I really never had a, an agent, so. I phoned up Sir Alex Ferguson, who, uh, and I just said, "Look, 
Everton want to keep me on for another year, you know, what do you think? He says, well, to replace you, Richard, they'd have to spend £20 million or something. Yeah, so, he's, you know, he's not wrong. He's he, not wrong. He said, you, you've had a model season. He says, so you can, he says, whatever you want type thing, you know, like, you know, so, and then obviously my, my, my wife and the, my kids were in America. And um, so I met with the, I met with the, the guys and, um, and just sorted out a deal and just, you know, that's what I want. And then they actually said that they actually said it was, uh, Sir Mr. Moore's, he was, he was there and the, the, the financial, um, director at the time was there because Walter had nothing to do with it. Walter came to me and said, the club, we want to keep you, Richard, but I, I have nothing to do with this, you know? Yeah. And this is where you meet. So I think it was with the, the, the chairman, Patrick. Um, Patrick yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I think at the time, I, I think, yeah, I think we had someone called Clifford Finch as well. He was, he was, he was doing stuff there at the time, the club secretary. He might have oh, been Dumpy, involved. Dumpy, 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 Patrick, no, was it Dumpy? Uh, it was a uh, yeah, uh, Dunf- uh, yeah, M- Michael Dunford. Sorry, Michael, yeah. Dunford. Michael Dunford. That's who it was, and the the, the old chairman who ran the Littlewoods, the old. Uh, oh, so, so John Moss. They both they both said to me, "Oh, well, I'm glad to have a player that hasn't got an agent." You know, so I was like, I said, I haven't got an agent. I said, I've got Fraser there. I went, oh, who's that? Sir Alex <laughs> <laughs> I was nearly falling off my chair, and and Sir Alex said, "If you can give me that, I'll be fine." You know, and then I just walked <laughs> out, and I, I never did anything for about three weeks, four weeks, whatever it was. I was like that. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so then you know, like about uh, um, we won four time. It must have been at the end of March or something. Or that's right, yeah. yeah. That's and, down there. Uh, and Walter said, oh, by the way, they've agreed that contract for you for a year, you know. Because I thought, I'm just going home, you know what I mean? So, and that was that. So when, when I got injured, I said to Walter, because it was was a, was a, was a lot of money at that time, you know. Yeah. Not a lot of money, a lot of money at that time. So I said to Walter, look, I'll just, just render the contract, finish. You know? I don't think I'm going to play again, Walter, you know. And he said, listen, we'll, he said, we'll, I'll need you. And, uh, and well, we did. you know, I did yeah. And I did that we got we had some good results. We got a few good results, but I never felt I never felt I played as well as I did the, the first season. You know? first yeah, season. I mean, again, just just to refer to, to, to previous guests we've had on, and if you don't want to answer this, you don't have to because what stays in the dressing room can stay in the dressing room. Yeah. But Michael Ball yeah. said that you once called a, a team meeting when things weren't going too well. Have you got memories of that? Of course, yeah, of course, because I've only called about two or three of those in my whole career. Um, right. You know, with all the players, um, what 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 makes you do that? Do, do, do you just just think players need it, or as the captain, do you just think that the players need well, the captain what, at the time? Or... Happened, I, I've been injured for a couple, I think, a couple of weeks, maybe, or a couple of things, and we hadn't got off to the best of starts. And um, you know, you know, like you when you come in and when you're injured, it's it's very difficult. But I was still the club captain at the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the players were moaning about the training and the money about this and money about the manager and money about uh, the assistant manager, you know, and uh, and I just called a meeting with all of them. And, um, uh, you know, I, I said to Walter and to, I, would, I just, you know, not to come down for five minutes. I just wanted five minutes with all the boys by themselves. And I just called it and said, look, you know, I've only called this and I've only done this a couple of times, you know, as a of the clubs and um, we've got to all have a look at each other instead of we're blaming all the training we're blaming the manager we're blaming this and I said this same training we were we were, we were six in the league last year exactly, with yeah. exactly the same training you know so I said we've got to have a look at ourselves you know and it was difficult because I wasn't playing so that, that right, was a different right. part and I can remember Mark Hughes coming to me after it and said, Goffey, that's one of the best things I've ever seen in a dressing room, you know? Wow. You're doing that. He said, but, he said, the, the players of today, so I don't think it's going to work, you know? Mm. He said, I don't want to blame someone else, you know, like type thing. Yeah, I, said, so, I, don't, yeah. I don't blame them. I said, I, ended, I needed them so that they got to look themselves in the mirror when they come in and blame yeah. themselves, you know what I mean? Say, hey, 
You know, the, I mean, training's training. You know what I mean? And you can't. Yeah. You know, it it was it was a really really tough season. That yeah, it was a really yeah, tough season. Great. That second season. Yeah. That great Everton team before 85, 86, 87. Hey, you know, I mean, you, you ask any of them, Andy Gray's and people like that, about how much training they did, you know, and they they were just good players and good characters. Mm. And that was that was the thing, uh, you know, I, I, I can't impress it, that it's about ourselves as as players, you know. It's not. The manager yeah. can only do so much, or the system manager can only do so much in the training, you know. Yeah, I mean that that season. Just saying that it was, we, we took some really bad results. Didn't we? that season you, you mentioned there that you came back in, in the tram year game. That that was as a fan base that was a really bad one to take. I remember that the the derby at Goodison. Three 0 three 0 yeah, and three 0 and then the derby at Goodison where, where they scored a last minute winner. There was there was so many bitter pills to swallow. Is, is that was, as yeah. the club as as the club captain when you go to Belfield on a Monday morning? Is it is it hard for you to get the dressing room back going when you're suffering on such such bad results, or yeah, have you definitely. got to sort of put a full stop and move on? No, but there's a lot, there's a lack of confidence sometimes as well, you know, when yeah. you get bad results, you know, and um, yeah, so yeah, it was a, that that was a difficult season that you know the, the second season. Like I said, the first season was 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 fine, but then the second season was difficult because we had lost players, new players were coming in. I mean, we had. Uh, uh, I think uh, who came in that season? Gravison came in. There was a lot of uh, oh, yeah. yeah, different. You know, Gascoigne came for a little period. I you know, Walter was str- was was struggling to get. You know, it was top that whole quality. new team. Yeah, it was a whole new team. Yeah. That that night, that ninety nine two thousand yeah. team was was just changed. Yes, Stephen Watson Watson coming at right back from. He came from, from Newcastle, oh, yeah, yeah, no Villa, and then we signed yeah. um, Al- Alessandro Pistoni. He, he came Pistone. in, yeah, when he came in. I mean, he was so there was a the, yeah, like you say, there was a, there was a there was a big turnover of players during that period, and we had lost, like you say, three of our, you know, Barmby, Barmby, yeah, yeah, and Jeffers went as well, didn't he? Jeffers was Jeff, the way yeah, to Jeff, yeah. So Jeffers went the, the same summer you you did, which was two thousand and one. But but I mean, yeah, just to rewind a, a little bit, what, what's yes. it like at Belfield in in summer two thousands when someone says to you, "We've signed Paul Gascoigne"? Yeah, it was. Um, look, I, I knew Paul. Uh, I had uh, once of that four years. He was the best I'd ever seen. He yeah. was like he was. But 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 some of the, the periods of 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 that time, um, he he wasn't in the right place. That's what I would I would, I would say, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he, he had a, a lot of struggles, you know, off the off yeah. the field. And um, when he came to Everton, I, I was surprised when he came yeah. to Everton. But I knew what Walter was trying to get that wee spark of that he had that he could. Yeah. You know? But it was it was very difficult because he had been he had gone from Rangers to Middlesbrough and he, and he couldn't get it at Middlesbrough and then he then he came to us you know and yeah. he was living Paul couldn't live he was living in in a hotel and <laughs> wasn't great for him you know so it was a difficult period no. for him at the time you know so he never yeah. did any justice at Everton. I think. No, I mean we had someone. I'm, I'm sure you're, you're still friends with Alan Myers, who's been on the podcast a bit, and he said similar to you. He said Paul was such a, a, a great person, but living alone in a big city was maybe not the best thing for him. But again, I think it, it excited the fan base because we just had the bitter pill of, of Nick Barnby going to our rivals. So to bring mm-hmm. Gas going in was exciting, and another one who was really exciting, and, and someone I know you, you've played with prior to this, Big Duncan came back in, in summer 2000 as well. Was that was that a big boost yes. for the dressing room? I think that was a that was that that was a boost as well for the dressing room, you know. Yeah. But well, I can I can remember most a lot of the time he was injured. He was yeah, injured yeah. when he came back as well because I was working in gym with him, you know, and a lot. So he was injured a lot of the time. I mean, I love Big Duncan to bits on his game. On his game, Duncan could, uh, you know, it'd be a handful for anyone on 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 his game, you know, and. Yeah. Um, but I always thought I always thought he never played as many games as he should, you know, yeah. because of injury. You know, the, yeah, that that was the, the thing, you know, and it was just maybe the way he was built or the way way he was, you know. Um, yeah. But I, you know, like when I see him around the club, 
so glad for him that he's still around the club because I would never have said when he was a 19-year-old or 20-year-old, I would never have gone on to be a, you know, a the manager coach. Thing, you know, or coach or something. You know, so he's, yeah. you know I mean, he's, he wears his sleeve, you know, and... Um, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrific it's, person. It's, and, and great, I just wish he had played... I wish he hadn't been injured as much during that period. Yeah, so do we. So, so do we. And Judge, you said before, yeah. and you spoke about, spoke about character. I'm just thinking out loud now. If you look back at that second season, and yeah. you look at the dre- you look at the dressing room compared to the treatment room, all the characters were in the treatment room. Yourself, Paul Gascoigne, yeah. Kevin Campbell, Duncan Ferguson. So it must have been so hard for, for, for the team without you guys when you when you look at it that way. And there's nothing worse as well when you when you when you can't help a team either. Yeah. And that, that that was a that was that, that was an issue. You know, when we were just going in, and you know, when you've got you know like a long term injury like that that I had, like I was the longest term injury that I had. I was out for about four or five months. Help, uh, you can sit on the sideline and you know think, but it's, um, it's you know. So that's why my my final my final year at Everton wasn't the way I wanted it to be. Do you, know, do you know when you're you're in the stand and you're watching Everton get beat? Does it hurt more than when you're on the pitch? Um, yes, in a lot of ways, yes. In a lot of ways, yes. You know, that's why that's why I thought. You know, I can remember the watching. I, or you just, I just wanted to play because I, I was, I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't injured a lot in my long career. I wasn't. I didn't have too many bad injuries. That was my first bad injury. So it made me yeah. think about the. The people who have had really bad injuries and they've come back and what they've had to go through, you know, yeah. to 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 do that, you know. So, uh, yeah. Well, well, your you, you, your Everton career uh, came to an end. And I think you played in in a, in a massive game. We beat Bradford City at home, and it, it sort of it made us safe. And then yes. a couple of days later, at the first of May, you announced that you were going to retire at the end of the season. I don't think you played again. I think you were still injured, unfortunately. You're playing through the pain barrier in the Merseyside Derby at Goodison and at Bradford City, a home at Goodison. Yes. I remember paid played through the pain barrier to get us safe. And then you announced your retirement. Um, yeah. Did you always know That's that, that, you, that was your last season or was that was that sort of... Did Everton try <laughs> you know, and maybe talk you out of it? No. When I, when I look back, I, I um, think... Um, because I must probably could have played whether it was Everton, I could definitely have played. Um, you know, yeah. I had uh, a few people were asking me to come back to Scotland, gone back up there. But then I can remember um, um, there was talk of me going to uh, um, a couple of teams in the, the first division at that time. Like David Moyes was, I think, it was, was at Preston. Preston, yeah, Preston, Preston yeah. In North End, yeah. I think he had wanted me to come. You know, just if I wanted to finish my career, and I just went, yeah. I just, I thought, I just, if I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish in the premiers at the top, and that was it. But you know, I, I think back and what I should have, um, I, what I should, you always think what you should have done, and I should have said to Walter, look, I won't sign a contract with Everton, but I'll come back at pre-season. The let me do the pre-season, and let me see how I feel. You know. Yeah, and, and go away and get, you know, get that get that season out of the way and just start, you know, with the preseason and and get, you know, build myself up and get back to because I would have been thirty nine at the time because I retired at thirty nine, so I would be thirty nine, and I think I could have played, you know, for for a season if I if I yeah like if I'd felt like I had when I was thirty seven, you know. I was I what I what I watched you I watched yeah. you at thirty nine Richard I completely agree and, and and I wish I wish you would have stayed for another year um because again that's, that's, what, that's what that's what I should have uh, you know to my children it's fair to get back to them and I went back and I, I actually um, and then um, when I went back uh, unfortunately got divorced. Um, oh God! Yeah. When I went back, so I should have stayed. I should have stayed. <laughs> I, I, don't know whether, I don't know whether to say congratulations or, or what. I'll, I'll leave that as a whole different podcast for you to deal with. Um, I know, I know. <laughs> you know that, made, that made me think that I might as well just have stayed. You know, in, in Liverpool. I loved Liverpool as a city. It was a great city. It was very, it was very similar to to Glasgow, and and um, I think that the the Evertonians. Um, new good players. That was a good thing. I, I liked. You know, mm-hmm. they knew 
they knew good players, you know. And, I, and a lot of Evertonians come up to me and say, "Oh, I wish, I wish uh, we had had you at 26." Yeah. You know? Wow. And I say, yeah, but I said, you know, to be, I said, to be fair, that you know, when I was in the first season, I said that was a that was a season um, that I'd played as well as I had over my career. You know, mm. I always think, I think because myself again, you know, because I played with with obviously Tottenham, but that was 13 years ago in the Premiership. Yeah, and then uh, when I came to Everton. I really had to prove myself against, uh, you know, really good players and top players, and um, and uh, it, was, it gives me great. Uh, it gives me it gives me a lot of, you know, I, when when Evertonians come up to me and say you had you were great for our club, or when you say I'm still I get put in Everton teams, you know, that, that gives me absolutely great do. Yeah, look, I've um, we've got a we've got a WhatsApp group uh, on Evertonians, and, and me and Gary said before, you never guess who we're speaking to today, Richard Goff, and they're all like, "When are you releasing the show? We can't wait to watch it." You, you are really, we're not just saying that you are really, really highly thought of by our generation of Evertonians. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Gary started the podcast. Good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I started Instagram about three or four months ago. My, my my son said, "Start Instagram," and I'm like, "But that's all for young kids, you know." I said, no one's caring. And I went, no, but if you put the old pictures on, and you'll be fine. Well, you know? you, you, Everything you, you from Everton's all, Everton always goes like, I always get calls from Everton boys saying, oh, you were a classic set of wheels, Goffy. You know, like, you, you know, like you were just you're like an old classic, you know? So it's like that. Ah, brilliant. You know? brilliant. Uh, br- brilliant. I, I mean, just, just to say there, go on, sorry, Gary. I'm going to say, Goffy, you, you say Instagram's for young people. If any, anyone who doesn't follow, Goffy on on Instagram. It's Richard Goff official. He, he's got he's got the body of a of a young man. <laughs> Which is all to shame. He's doing like runs at like five in the morning. He's like he can still. Oh, yeah. That's what I say. My body's okay. My 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 head looks about eighty. My head looks about eighty. <laughs> my body looks about eighteen. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, and, and that, that's how that's how we got in contact, isn't it, on Instagram? Yeah, that's how we reached out. So we're so thankful that like, your son suggested Instagram because it made us reach out to your fans. No, as well. I know, but I feel, um, you know, I just, you know, I feel like I was sixty the other day. You know, I was sixty years old the other day, and I just, you know, I just, it's like a bit of a psychological blow. You know, you sixty. You... <laughs> you you do not look it, Goffy. You absolutely do not look it. Game's over. Game's over. You know what I mean. But um, no, there's uh, yeah, uh, and I, I I still watch. You know, I still people always ask me. You know, um, who do you support? You know, yeah. you know, uh, Dundee United as a as a kid. Yeah. I always look result. Uh, you know, Tottenham, Rangers. And I always look for Everton's result, and I just I just. You know, then I speak to Alan, Alan Myers. You know, and I speak to yeah to the boys. I haven't, I haven't been back. I haven't been back to Everton since since I was away. I went back for high games, but I haven't been back because he keeps asking me back. You know, to come back. Yeah, he said I must come. You know, come to a game. Oh, you'd, you'd, be a, you'd be you'd be one hell of a welcome guest at Goodison. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, for the fans before we get into yeah, that, yeah. I'll tell you what, yeah, when, when that final game of Goodison and they're inviting ex pros back, I tell you what, Richard, if, if you can get over, there's a, there's a couple of painted Guinness on us, we'll, we'll take it out to show, show you the town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just finally, I mean, we, we, we're really yeah. conscious of your time, we, we really appreciate no, no, all this. the time in the world. Just a, just a couple of questions like Gary started the podcast predating your Everton career. If I can just ask a couple post dating your Everton career. Um so so you've left the club. Um were you really sad to see that that Walter was sacked a few months after that? Yeah, I think he knew that was coming. I think he knew that was coming. I think he, he started the, the following year. Um yeah. uh, the following season was that that would be two thousand one, two thousand two. And I think yeah. he would have been sacked in maybe the March or something, was it? That's right, yeah. March, that's right. In the March. You know, and um, very sadly, this, you know, this this uh, November, I went back to Scotland to, for his for his yeah, funeral. Very sad. But there were some great stories, you know, like even, you know, the, the chairman of Everton. What's, the, what's his name now? The chairman. Bill Kenwright. Oh, Kenwright. How can I forget Bill? He was a great guy. 
So um, he was uh, he was telling a story that they were going to sack him, and um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it was on Walter's tribute, and they were going to sack him, and um, he, he couldn't even bring the words to actually tell Walter. You know, he was such a gentleman. You know, and Walter Walter brought it up for him and said, "Listen, <coughs> I know what's happening. What you're going to get." To save this marvelous football club, that's what Walter oh. said. He said, "I know how healthy get, and I was Moise to get." And right. um, Moise came in and did it, but that's what Walter said to to Ken Wright. You know, oh, it's amazing, Ray, Ray, Ray Bill, who are we going to get to save this marvelous football club? You know, so amazing, amazing. Uh, you're right. Uh, that I watched the, the documentary on BBC Scotland when when he sadly passed away, and, and that was a. Uh, it touched me when I heard that because yeah, one of the pieces on it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, sometimes as fans, you, you don't see these things as fans, and, and it takes such a no. long time removed from to find these things out. At you know, the time, like, I mean, it's very easy for me to say sack him, and then you realise a long time after, good God, what a great man he was. But I think, I think even even with Evertonians, they know they had a good man in charge of their football club. He was a good man. He did. You know, he never had the player that, you know, before. So they knew. Yeah, but they yeah. knew he was. He was a. He was a perfect gentleman. And I, I've not. I've not heard anyone even say a bad word about him. You know. And never, I don't think no, they would. Never. Because they knew that. You know, like like I'm saying to you guys now that we're selling Materazzi and getting a 37 year old free transfer in. You know, and he was always juggling. He was always juggling at Everton. Right? Yeah, I found. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we, we had him, David Weir. Yeah, yeah. David Weir said that he, he wants at Belfield. He seen Walter Smith meeting the bank managers on behalf of the club. It was, it was yeah. so tight the finances. Yes, and it was, and it was really, um, you know, and and even in the second season when I, you know, I came back, and uh, you know, then you've sold Collins, you've sold Barnby, you've sold Hutchinson. You know, yeah. you're just thinking that's not helping. You know, that's not helping when you get rid of all your Absolutely. best players. That's not helping no. us any. You know? Guy even I, said I, I, that thing. It's nothing to do with me, Richard. You know, it's, I'd rather rid of any of them. Yeah. Yeah, the club did. It's, 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 yeah. it's amazing that these things come out after the time. I've only got one last question before before Gary ends the show, Richard. If you don't mind, so yes. you left Everton in, in 2001. Um, yes. In two in 2002. Wayne Rooney emerged from the academy and he just he just took over our hearts for a couple of years. He, he went on to break records. When you yes. were there, did you know he was coming through? Had you heard about him? Had you trained with him? No, Archie had said a few things about him, you know. Archie Knox had said uh, there's a kid coming through that's going to be very, very special, you know. But I'd never I'd never seen him. I'd never seen him okay. before, you know. So when he came through, it was oh brilliant. Fantastic, oh, yeah. you know. But for me now, um, I spoke to Frank Lampard just before I was over in, in Scotland, um, maybe three or four months ago, when Gerard had just left to go to, to Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, I said to Frank was in the director's um, director's box for one of the, the games at Rangers. And uh, I said to him, oh, have I spoke to you? You know, because I thought he would have been ideal for the Rangers job. You know, because he's worked with young players at Derby and stuff like that. You know, um, and he, you know, and he and he said no, they haven't, because obviously Van Bronckhurst had already been maybe, you know, that already arranged to to take Van Bronckhurst. But I like Frank. I, a lot of time for Frank is a is a good person, good good gentleman, and I think um, I think you'll well. For the football club, I'm on my fingers crossed. He's lost what we've got six games, seven games left. Six, yeah. six games. It's a it's a big ask. It's it's a it's a massive massive ask. But because just we don't want to keep things too current, but <clears throat> I think we're back in a situation now with the financial fair play. I think if the worst has happened to Everton, I think it, it could be really catastrophic. So I pray, Goffey. I'm not lying. I lose sleep when Everton don't win. I lose sleep when Everton yeah. you know drop points. I'm really hoping that that that. Frank is the man to, to sort this out and hopefully someone we can put a base and just build and, and get the club in a much better position because yeah, it's because not easy we, we, in this city to be a blue sometimes. No, but you've had to, we've had too many managers over the last, yeah. um, what, 
for 10 years or something, you know, it's you know, yeah. amazing amount of money, too many, yeah, you know, too yeah. many changes, and you, you know, you, you can't do, you can't work like that. I always think that uh, David Moyes was a very good manager, and he Manchester United, and rather than yeah. just getting, you know, he would have, you know, you know, like Sir Alex Ferguson was given time at Manchester United in the beginning, you know, three or four years, I and mean, David Moyes got like, what was it, a year? Uh, yeah, and before yeah, they were, yeah. you know, so yeah, so you need to give the you need to give the guys a better time, you know. But nowadays, it just it just seems um, managers are. Yeah, so do you say you know, like I look at Burnley now, and they've just sacked the guy, you know, and I'm thinking, there's who who are they going to bring in that's going to do a better job than him to get them out of trouble. You know, hopefully, hopefully no one, <laughs> hopefully no one. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, 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 that, that decision for me suited, I mean, I, I know they played tonight, which is a very important game, but that decision, I think, benefited it, us, you know, they, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. You know, watch six games left. We've got big, big games, big, we've got, we've got the, the last week of the season and um, we have Brentford, Crystal Palace at home, back to back. So right. I, I've, I've said on this podcast, we do weekly podcasts and we talk about current affairs. For yes. me, six points and we're okay. It, it just, we can't get leaped by that point. I think if Everton get leaped, we're going back to what you spoke about before, the big characters. I'm not too sure whether they're quite yeah. in this team. So yeah. if Everton can stay stay above and then win the last two home games, I think they'll be okay. Yes. Yeah, I yes. I mean, Richarlison looks like, for me, you know, when I'm watching the teams now, it looks like, uh, you know, a good, you know, good, good player. The young boy has come in is looking good as well. Good player, Anthony Gordon. Yeah, Anthony Gordon. Yeah, really good know, player. Small, you know the. I don't know what's happened to the lad Patterson because at Rangers he, uh, he's had an operation. He's um, he's ruled yeah. out till next season. He has an operation. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, but he, had Frank, only, he had only played about he had only played about ten games for Rangers. He hadn't played many games, you know. So it was like, yeah, but he was yeah. like whirlwind, whirlwind. So, but. But, um, he's he's fell in, he's fell into the same situation here with, with the club captain is the right back same as Rangers. Yes, mm. similar thing, similar thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think when if you can get the a few injuries, you know, like Mina returning. That's why I asked you about Mina because I never saw the game last night. He's a he's a he will help a lot. He's brave. Yeah, he, 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 he's yeah. brave and, and he he doesn't shake a fight. Um, and you can get again. He's he's a character. Absolutely, yeah. It's a positive influence, isn't he, on the team in general? Well, we just hope, we just hope things go well. I mean, you know, like um, I'll be watching it close. <clears throat> well, yeah, we, me, me, and me and Gary, unfortunately, sometimes have the we're season ticket holders, so it's it's a lot different, unfortunately, now than than it was when we were praising you. I, I, I'll let Gary end the show, but I meant what I said. Yeah. If you do find if you do find yourself back at Goodison. Please, please hit us up one time. I, I would love to get you in the studio and do some bits, and we'll we'll throw okay. in a bottle of wine as well for you and the missus. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. No, listen, Richard. Thanks, thanks a lot. I mean, I, I didn't mention it at the start, but I mean, I've I've been trying to, I've been peppering you for months, haven't I, to try to try and get you in, and and, and you've been such a gentleman in the way you've responded, and I, I know you said, and I know. Um, your partner says at the stars of the piece that that um, you're not the most tech savvy. Where that I'm not either. But no, we really appreciate you getting getting on. And, and I know you, you know, just just to give our, our listeners and the fans an update of Richard Goff now. Be, before they maybe follow you on Instagram, tell us about where you are now, what you're doing. Well, um, it's about two thousand uh, down here in San Diego, in the San Diego area. Wow, um, I come. Uh, it's a good area because uh, my kids were here, so I just were close to them. Then they're all they're then they're gone and gone to college, and they're getting on with their own lives now. So that's just you know the thing. But I, I've kept I've kept my house here, and um, I go back and forward. I'm going to sit up with the Rangers. And I go back and forward. Uh, uh, you know when when they need me to. To, to for the games and stuff like that you know they had really obviously a poor time up to about 2014 2015 when uh, uh, Dave King got in charge 
charge and uh, manage to turn around, so to speak, turn the ship around, so to speak, as, um, you know, then Gerard did a really good job. Well, saying a good job, he last year managed to win the tape to, to um, eventually stop Celtic um, going on to win 10 titles in a row. Five of which sell sell the Rangers weren't even in the division, so I don't know how you don't count. They don't count. Yeah, we, we say it all the time in Liverpool's league title. It was during COVID. It doesn't count. They don't count. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They get given titles and everything. Yeah. So, so who? That's another story. But um, but I mean, the Rangers of now and the Rangers that I played in is a completely different animal. Um, yeah. because, like we said before, we got all the best players in Britain because of the because the English teams weren't in Europe during from 1985 to to, <clears throat> and obviously the Evertonians understand that because in the in the European Cup and they never got the chance to play in the European Cup. You know, in the, in 86, 87. So we got all the best players, but now. It's a completely different ball game, and, and how Rangers have managed to get through to the Europa um, League semi-final, quite unbelievable. With the team, you know, it's really unbelievable. There's been a bit of luck involved. Goalkeeper's been fantastic, you know, and full, you know, full credit to them. The way that the team's done, you know, the the European games have just kind of brought out something. They, you know, like when some the teams just played to their absolute, and in some of the games they've played to their absolute peak in, in Europe, you know. So now they've given, we've given ourselves a right chance against Leipzig, who are a really good side as well. Um, you know, but if you think the Rangers beaten Portuguese teams, German teams, Russia, Dortmund, they'd be Dortmund in Dortmund, yeah, yeah. they'd be, in you Dortmund, know, yeah. it's, like, it's unbelievable, you know. And hopefully we can get through and hopefully West Ham can get through and it could be a British final that would be yeah. that would be fantastic some, or, some story that would that be some story some story you know it would, it would unbelievable you know for, for for David Moyes as well you know but uh, but if you look at the the budget that Rangers is working with and the budget that all these other teams are working with Rangers shouldn't be anywhere near the place you know uh, um, so I mean, from what from from what what was happening ten years ago with the financial problems and going right down to the the bottom of the the Scottish leagues, it's um, quite unbelievable. So, some recovery, and, and it's yeah, it's some, some recovery. recovery. Yeah, and it's it's great great to hear you still that that Rangers still appreciate you, Richard, and you're still involved, and, and long may that continue. Yeah, and I hope to get back to to to, to Goodison soon. And you know, I know you're going to the the new stadium as well on on, on the wharfs. You know, so um, that looks like it's going to be. Does that start next year? That's, yeah, to, uh, yeah, twenty twenty four. The plan is for that to open. So I think we've got two yeah. more seasons left at Goodison. Okay, but they've started working on it, haven't they? They've started. You can see it, it. Yes. Yeah. So, so so the area that it's in, it, it, it's sort of it, it's an old dock. So it's yes. now risen over the wall. You can now start seeing the stands being built now. So it's it's yeah. being built, yeah. Yeah, I remember Abel Xavier. He used to live down there at the docks when he was uh, playing. Not, not, not me and he me. was always he was always out in in town. You always seen him, and he was so flash. He didn't hide well, himself. <laughs> didn't hide himself. It was great. It was great because he was the he was the one. Well, I wasn't out all the time, but I mean, um, he was the one uh, because he didn't. Man, I never had anyone. So we just used to go for, for dinner together a lot of the yeah. time. I think I used to go home and he used to go out on the town. Like, <laughs> you know, big handsome guy he was. You know? Oh, mm-hmm. funny. Anyway. Anyway, that just it's brought back good memories. And, you know, um, of what, uh, you know, Kevin Campbell and some really good, you know, David Weir, <clears throat> Michael, Michael Paul, you know, some really good memories of the, the boys, eh? Jeffers. It was, it, yeah. It, it was a, it was a really strong team. It had a strong manager, it strong was. captain. It, yeah, good, good forwards. But Richard, I'm, I'm not just saying it because you're on. You, you were such a great player for Everton Football Club. Oh. And I, I, I know we got you at the end of your career, and and, and 
arguably we might have got an even better player had we had we got you even even earlier than that. But to watch you in a blue shirt yeah. was, was an honor. You're a top top player. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, and that, that's a perfect way to end it. Richard Goff, it's been an absolute pleasure. We wish you all the best for the future, and, and as Millsy said, we hope to see you very soon back at Goodison. I hope so as well. Thank you very much for Take having me. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.